Hey, everybody. I am here with Abby Tanner. Um, she is a local insurance agent with American Family. Um, she is an amazing insurance agent. Uh, I've been working with Abby for, gosh, it's probably been 10 years or so. It's been quite a while. Um, and so I'd just like to thank you, Abby, for, for joining me today to talk a little bit about homeowners insurance. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Um, I know this is something that that most people have to deal with. Most people, anybody who has a home, has to deal with homeowners homeowners insurance. And I think what what I'd like to do today is just you know find some of those and talk about some of those really hot topic items. You know, and maybe some things also that are under the radar that might be good for people to know about that they don't know that can really help them with their homeowners insurance needs. So. All right. Well, Abby, let's let's kick it off. So um, just maybe tell tell everybody just a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. I've been an American family agent here in Denver. We're in Northwest Denver in the Highlands and we have a second location in Littleton. Um, we've been in business here in Denver for about 13 years. But my background is I grew up in the business. And so my dad's been a long time American family agent out of state. So. OK. Yeah, grew up in it. Yeah. That's great. Well, I mean, yeah, it can relate just since I work, uh, you know, with my mom, Kathy, um, you know, she is in town, but, you know, having that, that background and kind of raising us in the industry, so to speak, that, that it does help to have that kind of that background growing up, you know, learning about it too. Yeah. I mean, you can't <laughs> help it. You, you know, things you don't even know. Whether you want to or not, it's, it's yeah. around you. It's around us. <laughs> great. All right. Well, so Abby, let's kick it off. First question that I have for you is, um, you know, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see homeowners make that can be avoided? Yeah, great question. So, so often I feel like people have no idea what they're buying. They have no idea what they're getting for coverage until they have a claim, until things go bad. And then they may or may not have what they need. And that scares me. I, I'm like, oh my goodness, we need to take care of you beforehand. We need to make sure you know what you're buying and that you get the coverage that you need. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's the biggest one. And, and people are embarrassed. I think when they're talking to insurance companies, they don't, they don't want to ask. They're, they're embarrassed to ask, well, what does that mean? What, what is that coverage? What am I missing? What am I not getting? And I, right. I, there's no dumb questions. Ask them all. We're here to help. Yeah. And I think people in general have that fear of like, when they don't know something, it's, it's hard for them to ask when it, when something like this is so important, they, they really, they should, they should just, you know, it's okay. You're, that's what the, you're there for is you're there to help them. Absolutely. I mean, this is most likely for most people, it may be the largest investment they ever make. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. You want to make sure it's covered correctly. Yes. That's, that's one of the big ones. Um, when I'm comparing coverage with clients or, or people who are shopping for insurance, a lot of times what I'll see, um, I'll see where homes are underinsured and we can talk about that. Um, but I sure. also see here in Colorado, um, you may have an all perils deductible, meaning any claim would have a $1,000 deductible or $2,000 deductible. But a lot of carriers are moving to a percent wind hail deductible. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you had a 1% wind hail deductible and you had your house insured for a half a million dollars, when you have that hail claim, and you will have it, it's coming. It's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, when you have that hail claim, you're yeah. going to be in the first $5,000 before insurance kicks in. So if you're comparing that to a policy that has a $1,000 all perils deductible, I mean, personally, I'd rather only spend $1,000 on my hail claim versus $5,000. I'm with you, yeah. Yeah, I can think of a lot of other things I'd rather spend that $4,000 on. <laughs> and I'm running through those in my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also a lot of optional coverages and different carriers have different optional coverages. And I mean, people don't even know what to ask. So having an agent who can guide you through that process and tell you what the optional coverages are, um, you know, if your sewer line backs up and you have a, a gross mess in your house, who's cleaning that up? I don't want to do it. <laughs> so <Sure. laughs> sewer backup coverage that'll pay to clean up that mess. Um, uh -huh. You know this from the real estate side. One of the most common inspections done with the buy and you know, with the sale of any home is the sewer line scope. So yes. we have coverage for that sewer line to be repaired or replaced. And if you've ever had to replace a sewer line, it can be ten thousand dollars plus. It they're not inexpensive. Yeah. So you know if you can have that covered by insurance, that it makes the day a little bit better. 
Yeah, that's good to know. Just curious on that, Abby. What you know for that additional coverage for for sewer line coverage? What what are you, what are people looking at as far? I know it probably varies house to house, but like, what would be maybe an is there an average of yeah? I mean, that? newer homes it's like twenty five bucks a year, and older homes it may be yeah fifty dollars a year. It's minimal per cost. year. Yes, <laughs> compared to having to replace a sewer line that can be thousands and thousands of dollars. I, you know, and I talk to people and I share this with them. And most people have never heard of this. You know, it's, it's like, and, it, it's, and this, is, this is a big, big deal, especially in Denver with these older homes. Um, I mean, I, in the last year alone, we've, we've had to help several people um, deal with sewer issues. And they had, you know, in, in those cases, they were home sellers who didn't, you know, had not worked with you yet. And they um, didn't have that coverage. They just didn't know about it. Well, and Zach, I will tell you, it's a newer coverage that's come out in the last five years. And we're seeing where carriers are starting to offer it. Um, I think we okay. were earlier carriers to offer it, but I'm hoping that more and more offer it because it's so important and it's just not a surprise. Sure. No, that's real. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. I, I think that's really important for people to know about. Yeah. Um, are, are there any other, you know, as far as big mistakes that can be avoided? Do you have anything else to, to add to that? Yeah, I mean, one of the I, I believe that a local agent is huge because a local agent has resources. When you have that claim and you need a restoration company or you need your home rebuilt after a fire or you need a sewer line replacement, mm-hmm. a local agent has connections to you know contractors who can help you through these situations. Um, mm-hmm. A local agent knows cost of construction, and that's a real issue here in Denver. Sure. Five, 10 years ago, we were rebuilding homes at $200 a square foot. Now, today, after the Louisville fire, wow. we're hearing over $400 a square foot to rebuild a home. So you really need someone local who knows the cost of construction mm-hmm. and, you know, and has the resources to connect you. And 800 yeah, that's a- is not going to do that for you. <laughs> No, no, no question. I mean, yeah, we see that just with, you know, with um, clients who are in people who are doing remodeling projects and the cost of, you know, what they're spending now compared to years ago. So then you, you multiply that out for the cost of construction of a new home. And it's just, it's, you know, what people had in their minds of what it used to be is not that way anymore. Yep. Yeah. Um, wow. I think the consistency too of a local agent or a local team, you're going to get the same answer twice. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine calling an 800 number and getting a different answer or a different rep every, you know, a phone setter rep every time. Just totally, right. who knows if you get the same answer. So I think there's, you know, some something to be said about consistent relationships and information passed along. Right. Because there's that trust that you build with them when, when you're helping insure their homes. It's so important to have that trust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another big thing that we're seeing in Colorado, litigation is becoming more and more frequent. Um, mm. Evidently, we are a litigation-friendly state. Mm. So people are more and more f- filing lawsuits against each other. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that liability coverage and having as much liability coverage as you can get, I mean, American Family will offer a million dollars of liability coverage on our homeowners policies. Yes. Some carriers will only offer 100000 or 300000 of liability coverage. Uh, My thought okay. is if you get sued, you want your carrier to be responsible for as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Sure. You're not yeah. in the pocket. That's great advice. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Okay. Um, um, another big thing is, is the, the age of your roof. So the um, age of your roof can really make a difference in the cost of your insurance. So carriers, especially here in Colorado, we want to see newer roofs. They're less likely to have hail damage, um, sure. impact resistant shingles. So if you have hail resistant shingles, that makes a big difference in your cost of insurance. So yes. the more you know about your roof, the mm-hmm. Ways that you can save for sure on your home insurance. Well, and that, that brings me to another question, just in because that, that is another way. And I remember we've talked about that in the past. What are some other ways in which homeowners can save money on their monthly premiums? Yeah, so I'm sure you've heard of bundle and save. So the more policies you have with one company, the more you're going to save. Um, you know, if you have a home security system or now mm-hmm. the new, like the ring video doorbells or all of the cameras that are tied to apps. All of that to bring your cost of your homeowner's insurance down. Um, The better shingles, the the impact resistant shingles, um, the longer you're with a company, you're going to save more. Um, Mm. Believe it or not, insurance carriers are watching how frequently people switch. 
and oh. there's a you're scored on that. So the people who are st- you know, staying longer with a carrier have a better score and are thus paying less for their insurance. So um, those who are speed dating get penalized. They do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it, it, remember, insurance is all about analytics and data. The more, you know, we, we are just buying data left and right to know more about our insurance so that we can more accurately price so that we can okay. be more competitive. And so it all goes back to, you know, the more we know. And what we know is that people yeah. who switch carriers frequently actually have more claims. There's huh. statistics behind that. Interesting. Anyway, okay. Um, okay. Well, that- claims history is a huge factor in bringing price down. And so I tell people, I'm like, be smart about filing claims both mm-hmm. ways. You want to make sure that you talk to your agent before you file a claim so that you don't have um, unnecessary claims on your claims history. So I if see. you think you might have had hail, you don't want to file a claim. You want to have a rougher look at your there house. There you go. See yes. <laughs> if you actually have damage before you file a claim. Some carriers will not accept you if you filed too many claims, even if they were with zero dollars paid out. They, mm-hmm. And it's a frequency issue and they won't accept you. That's, that's so, great advice. That's something that we share with our clients too, is if, you're, if, if there's concern of it, let's have a roofer first, you know, and that is the key right there. Roofer first, and then depending on what they say, then bring the insurance company into it. Yep. Zach, here's okay. the flip side of it. You got to file claims too. So here in Colorado, it blows my mind when people, you know, if they haven't had a, a new roof in 15 years uh-huh. and they're on the front range, I'm like, you probably had hail. And yes. We <laughs> could have gotten a new roof. And so and There's a number of storms I can think of that probably cause damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I hate for yeah. people to go too long without asking questions of their agent. I mean, mm. for you to have missed the opportunity to have a new roof on your house paid for by your insurance mm. company. That's, that's a great point. That's a great point. And I, yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm, we, we've come across situations just like that. And, and then they just say, well, I just, you know, I never got around to it. And it's amazing how, like, how people think that way, but that happens. And so it's like, we, got to, we have to be there to prompt them and help them. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I, I think people, I mean, they're like, I don't want to file claims. I just want my insurance there for when the house burns down. And I'm like, I understand. But in Colorado, with the amount of hail that we have, you're paying a premium for your homeowner's insurance because it's here along the front yes. range. So... 100%. For those new roofs, you know, you should yeah. get them when you deserve them. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Um, so uh, another question I have for you is, um, I guess, well, what are some key questions homeowners should ask when speaking with a homeowner's insurance agent? Yeah. One of the big factors that I'm seeing, um, again, carriers are looking for ways to, um, in, in some cases, pay less out on the claim. Uh-huh. And and still show a competitive premium. So one of the questions I always want to know is, is that policy full replacement cost or is actual cash value? So Uh full replacement cost means when you have a loss, all you're going to pay is your deductible and then the insurance carrier pays everything. Actual cash value is a depreciated payout. So let's say your roof is supposed to last 30 years and it's Mm -hmm. 15 years old. They're only going to pay half of the cost mm. of the roof minus your deductible. Okay. Who, who wants to pay for half of a roof? Right. I know because in their, in people's mind, they're going to be expecting that it would be the entire cost of the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So wow. That, that's really a big one. To know sure. if it's full replacement cost or actual cash value. And okay. then I would want to know, you know, I'm buying insurance for if I have a claim, what's mm. your process who helps me you know who if, if I don't understand or if things aren't going well who's going to hold my hand who's going to walk me through the claims process because most people most people haven't filed a lot of claims and they don't know what to expect or what the process yeah. will look like right I mean yeah when you only do it a few times and, and not like where, where you help people many many people every single day that you know it's this is what you do. And, and so that, that guidance and that handholding, I can see how important that would be for people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to know, is there, um, uh, you know, question about solar panels. Um, this is a, just a hot topic, a hot issue with 
you know, in real estate with whether it's, you know, homeowners and then, and then when you sell a home with, with solar panels, but you know, it's becoming much more prevalent. We're seeing more new build communities where they're just building the solar panels onto the homes. Um, just curious, is there a special homeowners insurance um, rider or something like that that's required for solar panels? What's kind of, what, what can you share about that? Yeah, great question. Um, for us, there's not a specific additional coverage, but it, we do need to know about them. So two mm. factors come into play. I always ask, if they burn up or if they are hail damaged or you know, something happens to these solar panels, do you want me to replace them? So if the answer is yes, I own them or I'm leasing them and I'm, you know, I need to cover the panels, then I need to know about them so that I can give you enough coverage to replace them. Okay. Some, some of the contracts are set up to where the homeowner is not really responsible for the panels, and that's fine too. Either way, if there is a hail claim and the roof has to be replaced, either way, I have to pay to remove the panels off the house mm. so that the roof can be replaced. And then I have to pay to put those panels back on the house. Okay. Either way, I need to be aware of them so that I can price the policy correctly and give okay. you the numbers that you need. So whether somebody is buying a house that has solar panels or they already own and they're thinking about putting them on, then they would need to get in touch with you or or, their, or any insurance agent, but you uh, to, to let, let you know about that. Absolutely. You want to make sure you're covered. Got it. Okay. That's helpful to know, Abby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I, I have a, another question about, um, you know, it, you kind of touched on it earlier about being underinsured. And I think probably with the, with the recent Marshall fire that that's especially top of mind. Um, so maybe it's a two part question, but you know, for people that maybe were experiencing loss there that they were perhaps underinsured. And also is there something, you know, with appreciation that we've seen in the Denver area over the last handful of years that perhaps people are also underinsured because they were maybe priced out at based on what the different value was versus what their value is now? Yeah, great question. So one of the things I talk about a lot is the value of your home. I don't care. So I'm never going to buy or sell your house. What mm -hmm. I'm going to do is rebuild it. So okay. I care about cost of construction. I want to know cost of labor, cost of two by fours, cost of siding and roofing. And, and so again, not to discredit the value of your home, but I'm, I'm never going to buy or sell it. So I care about square footage. Um, you know, I want to know what is the market in Denver? And that's the thing that has changed so much in the last five years is the demand is so high for new home construction and rebuilding right. um, that it's really driven up the cost. The labor costs have increased. And then here in the last two years, and now after the Marshall fire with 1,100 homes that have to be rebuilt, mm -hmm. um, the supply and demand is crazy. We've got inflation like never before. We've mm -hmm. got... Um, a, a, unfortunately, not enough labor to rebuild these homes. The supply chain is a little bit of a mess past yes. um, pandemic. So all of these things are driving up the cost of construction. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I cannot stress enough. Call your agent and do a review on your home because it's highly likely that you're underinsured. Um, you know, a few years ago, we thought we could rebuild homes for 200 to 250 a square foot. And the Marshall Fire homes, they're saying, are going to cost over $400 a square foot to rebuild. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I mean, uh -huh. I would say as a general statement, we haven't been insuring homes to that rebuild cost because it hasn't been what we saw in the Denver market. Mm -hmm. okay. It really is time to do a review with your agent. Well, that's incredibly good advice. And, um, I, you know, that I, I really learned something there. I, I thought that it was more tied to value as opposed to you know, the, the actual, the cost of the construction and, and, you know, like we've talked about that has gone up significantly. So great advice to give, you know, to, to get a review of your, um, you know, uh, kind of your situation. So, so like on that note, yeah. think of the homes that burnt in Louisville and mm -hmm. you where some people are listing their lots for sale yeah. for a million or 450,000. I've seen a couple of different um, price points. So yes. I always use that as a reference. Your house burns to the ground. Your mm -hmm. land is going to be there. So you always have your land. And as That's you know, true. real estate, location, location, location. <laughs> That's everything. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, those houses that burn to the ground, their lots are still highly valuable and great locations. So right. that plays into to some of that. Sure. Now that, that makes a lot of sense. Good point. 
really good point. Well, Abby, um, this has been awesome. I, I've, I've learned a lot, and I know that our viewers will also be learning a lot from from your tips, advice, kind of guidance on all of uh, the questions that we've we've gone over today. Do you have anything you know maybe that we didn't cover that would be important for people to know? No, I would just say use me as a resource. Even if I'm not your agent, if you just have insurance questions, reach out. I'm happy to help. Um, there's there's okay. no question. Okay. Well, that's great. Abby, you're, you're amazing. Thank you so much for, for all of your knowledge and being willing to share it with people because, again, there are a lot of people who will find value in this and be able to you know, probably get in a better situation with their homeowner's insurance needs. And um, so thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, my pleasure.